Thank you so much, Andrea. It's yeah. fantastic to see everyone again. Uh, thank you for logging in. I'm happy to share with you a little bit about uh, the new tool uh, today, the improved tool that we're sharing with the field. Um, and I'm delighted for the participation, so many states and districts. Um, it's wonderful, looking forward for your engagement and questions as we move forward. Before I, I jump into that, I wanted to say a word about um, the, um, why are we so preoccupied in the, in the GTL Center and this issue of diversifying the digital workforce and, and, and why we connected to our overall work on shortages and equitable access to teachers. Shortages and equitable access to teachers are for me one work. Um, and, and the reason is uh, that progression that we're talking about in this slide that we're, that we're looking at. We know that teachers are the most important within school factor for student achievement. And we know that a diverse workforce improves outcomes for all students. But because the workforce is currently predominantly white, it is those white students that uh, have the benefit of those areas of effectiveness as we're talking about when we're talking about diversifying the workforce, which is raising student achievement, which is equitable assignment to disciplinary uh, issues, which is uh, equitable assignment to gifted and talented programs, uh, avoiding implicit bias, all the things that good teachers do. Um, uh, diverse workforce would do them better and benefit all students. Uh, and for that reason, um, when we're talking about improving access to good teachers, we're talking about diversifying the teacher workforce, and we're seeing both of these issues go hand in hand um, in, in, in our work. Um, this tool that I'm going to present today, we've released a very early version of it in early 2019. And um, since then, we've been working with states and district across the country. And you see some of them are in the dark blue. Dark blue here are represented every state that we know that at the state or at least the district experienced, uh, experimented with the tool to some degree. Some of them done a uh, large TA project with us. Some of them, we just know that they've used it. And by the way, whenever I'm starting, and many times that I'm starting a TA project on, on this issue, I find out that, that uh, uh, that states have already used that without us knowing. So if you're one of those states that have used it and you're in the light blue here, you can tell us in the chat that you've used, you've used the tool before, we would love to hear. But um, we've had experience with some more um, intensive projects with some states and that experience have taught us some lessons around what states need uh, with this new tool and how can we get it done. And that inspired the development of this new version of the tool. I could only present today a glimpse of it in, in, in the few minutes that I have. It has so many features, but I'll share some of the new ones. Um, and uh, and, and um, hopefully if you're interested, we're happy to engage with you further in a deeper conversation. Uh, at this point, I'd like to share, uh, I'll, I'll leave the slides here for just a second and move to the Excel. Hopefully you can see it. Andrew, if you can give me a thumbs up there. Yeah, see it. Um, the, the tool started as a diversity tool back in 2019. It is now a shortage tool, more general than diversity, but with a specific focus on diversity. And you'll hear from Betty in a second about how shortage work and work on recruitment retention often results in a focus on diversity, given where the data uh, is leading us. But our, the tool is inspired by our three guiding principles for doing work and addressing educator shortages. The first one, focus on the entire talent development framework. This image that we're seeing here in the Excel, that's the GTL Center Talent Development Framework. And um, it includes those three categories, attract, prepare, develop, support, and retain. And you see that kind of blurry, uh, this blurry lines between them that represent the fact that it's not different categories. They're really one. When we're talking about when we want to address shortages, we have to think about the entire continuum. Teachers leave classrooms because of working conditions issues that their peers who are thinking to become teachers know about and do not recruit for that reason. Teachers leave classroom because they were ill-prepared and feel like they are not good at their job. We have to think about the entire uh, continuum of the, of the, the pipeline uh, if we want to really address shortages. The second guiding principle that always leads us is disaggregating as much as we can and avoiding these big statements. A state is missing 10,000 teachers because we know that's not really true. Or the statement that we see here that uh, state X is a chemistry teacher for every 400 students, where in reality, state X 
is a chemistry teacher for every 100 students in affluent schools, almost no shortage, and a qualified chemistry teacher for every 2,000 students in high need schools, almost complete shortage. That's a much more nuanced representation of the data that's going to help focus us where we need to focus and the tool helps us to do that. And the third guiding principle focuses on a ready framework. After we know where we need to do this work, we want to make sure we tailor the strategies to accommodate their unique circumstances that are often not that easy. As the ready framework suggests to us, it's a large framework that we won't get into today, but that's um, what, what that framework suggests. Um, at this point, I want to quickly jump back to the slides and send a question to you all. Uh, let me move back here. Here we are. And we would love to hear from you. We'll actually, we'll open a survey and we'd like to see which areas of the pipeline did your state focus uh, its shortage and diversity work? Um, is it recruitment to the profession? Is it teacher preparation? Or is it the development support and retention? I'm gonna give you a minute to answer and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're seeing, I think, a lot of um, focus on the recruitment to the profession, um, a little bit less on the uh, support and retention to teachers, and then a little bit less on, uh, on uh, teacher preparation, I'm seeing. Um, I think we can close the poll now. Uh, so uh, looks like, uh, hopefully you can see the results, look like uh, a nice mix, but mostly a focus on the recruitment. I think the message that one of the messages we're trying to bring is we, we, A, we want to focus on the entire continuum and B, we want to use the tool to see where, where in the pipeline is the shortage driven and, and, and really do strategies that, that reflect that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Let me go back to the tool here. So we talked about our three guiding principles and I'm gonna to go to the data input page where we put our state or district or school data. Um, and the data input is inspired by those same guiding principles. If we're gonna look at the rows here, the rows that use our talent development framework, attack, attract, prepare, develop, support, retain, they include all of the categories that we can think of all the way from from wanting to become teachers, finishing high school, wanting to become teachers, all the way to retention, have all those categories. And then the columns, they represent our need to disaggregate. So we're gonna wanna know how many teachers we have at each point in the pipeline by race, by gender, by subject, by program, by low performing schools versus others, by urban versus rural schools, by uh, low income schools versus others to really know where the problem is. And that's what our tool does is we put numbers and I've inputted some, um, we get this first kind of uh, 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 introductory chart that the tool does to us. It just shows us how our workforce uh, declines as we go from one step to the other and gives us a first impression of the shortage. There's nothing unique about that to teaching. Every profession is gonna have that decline. What's unique is the inequality. That's why we're breaking the data to try and understand who experiences this more than more than others. I'm just going to show one chart, which is the chart that focuses on race that Betty is going to show later. So this is mock data. This is not real data. And it's data collection is difficult, but this tool is designed for difficult data circumstances. It's designed for SEAs, for LEAs, and it's designed for missing data. And we worked with this tool with states and districts that had two data points and others that had 20 data points. And you'd be surprised in the, in the amount of insights that you could get at both types of scenarios. But what this chart shows us based on the number of teachers that we have uh, white and BIPOC at every category that we have data for, it helps us see which steps in the pipeline are responsible for creating gaps as opposed to just inheriting gaps that were there before. Places where we've inherited gaps are not places where we necessarily want to focus. We want to focus on those areas that create gaps. For example, in this chart, we're seeing, I'm, I'm going to the third point from the right, the top line is white and the bottom purple line is BIPOC. And we're seeing that post-secondary enrollment in this uh, imaginary state is 56% white, 
and 44% BIPOC. But who chose teaching? There we see a huge difference. When we look at who chose teaching, 88% white and 13% non-white. And some of those other categories that are, that are coming after that inherit that gap. So we know that there is that point in the pipeline, by the way, it's connected to working condition and retention because they don't choose teaching for a reason. But that, that, part, that part of the, top of the pipeline we know is a, is a problem for us. And that's where we want to focus. And this um, has been something we've created to the first tool because we've seen errors in places that um, focus their work on places that inherited gaps. For example, if you want to focus on your hiring, because your hiring for schools is predominantly white, but maybe that hiring is proportionate, it just takes a pool that is, that is already uh, almost exclusively white, and you've got to focus on the pool, not on the hiring practices themselves. This tool helps you do that. But as we were doing this work, we, was, we started to notice another issue, and that's part of what um, the, the new feature of the tool, uh, tools uh, actually include. So I'm gonna go back to the slide here. And the issue has to do with where to prioritize this work. And it was interesting to see your answers from the first poll uh, around that. Um, we're we're um, uh, wanting to think together with you and, and show you kind of how the tool can help you and this question of where we should do this work first, where is it most urgent? Um, so how do we choose where to focus our diversity work? We have your two imaginary districts, Jefferson City uh, and Adamstown, not referring to any real uh, cities with that name. Um, Jefferson City, let's imagine a more kind of urban center with 75% um, of the students being BIPOC, similar to Lansing, by the way, and 50% of the teachers uh, being uh, BIPOC. Whereas in Adamstown, 25% of the students are and 5% of the, of the teachers are. So where should we prioritize this work? The first most common approach that people take, the districts and state take, is to see who has the highest rate of students of color. And that would be Jefferson City with 75% of the, of the students. And that's um, a very common way that people do it. The second way is to look at the differences between the students of color and teachers of color, okay? So in Jefferson City, we have a 25 percentage point gap, 75 versus 50. And in Adamstown, we have 20 percentage point gap, 25 versus five. So in both of these cases, we would, choose Jefferson City. As we've seen in much of our work across the country, states choose Jefferson City first to, to prioritize this work. But we want to offer a different approach. And this approach is based on, on a study by Hansen and Quintero from the Brookings Institution that they suggest we should look at instead at the ratio between teachers and students or students to teachers. And the ratio is going to tell us it's going to answer us the question of which students are least likely to meet a teacher that shares their race. Not what is the biggest difference, but which students are least likely to meet a teacher that shares their race. When we look at the ratio, we actually have a strong preference for Adamstown here as a priority for this work. Because in Jefferson City, the ratio is 1.5. It's a small ratio. That's because half of the teachers are BIPOC teachers and students are almost certainly going to meet teachers who, who, who share their race. Whereas in Adamstown, or in Adamstown, according to these cutoffs that were suggested by that same research, that's a ratio of above four, which means a very large ratio which means students in Adamstown are extremely unlikely to ever meet teachers who, who, who share their race. The tool I'm gonna to very, very briefly show you, actually, let me say one more thing. Um, the BIPOC students in Adamstown are potentially more vulnerable for the types of biases that we're trying to address when we're talking about diversifying the teacher workforce. Because when the research shows us, there's a, there's a citation, the research shows us that when BIPOC students are fewer in number, when they represent more of a minority, they are more uh, vulnerable to these types of implicit bias. If you're talking about two black students in a white classroom, that's different from a classroom that is predominantly black, for example. 
And um, for that reason, those students in Adamstown may be more vulnerable. So what we've designed for you is this feature in the tool that's gonna help us prioritize where to do this work. And I'm gonna try and show it as quickly as I can because we're very short on time. Uh, I'm looking at, at uh, another data input page here. Oh, sorry, I didn't switch back to the Excel. Let me switch back. I'm looking at another data input uh, page here. And that allows me to choose a state. Right now I chose Delaware. And to choose whether I want to focus on district or school level. If I switch to school, I'm going to get at the bottom a list of schools. I'm going to go to district. I'm getting the list of districts in Delaware. And using federal data, it's going to tell me the rate of BIPOC students in that um, state. Uh, and by the way, you can override that data if you have better data than the one that is present here. You can just put different data. And what it asks us is to write the, the rate of, of teachers uh, that are BIPOC. So I'm going to put 20% in one, 80% in another, 2% in, in another. As, as, I'm, as I'm doing that, it creates this ratio for me and tells me which districts have the highest ratio. I can go to the next tab. I'm going to actually get a prioritization table here. It's going to tell me where do I need to do first, the work first. And if I chose schools, it's going to add schools here as well. I can choose schools and districts. It's going to add both of them together. And it's going to tell me, well, this district is a priority. But within that district, we should really focus on that school because that school is students that are unlikely to meet teachers of color. That is, um, in a natural kind of that new addition, we have others as well. I don't want to take too much time with that. I'll just say one last thing as I'm transitioning back the slide and handing it to my colleagues. The tool is only the very, very first step in doing this work. And we're um, following the work on the quantitative tool with a qualitative effort of trying to understand why teachers are leaving or why teachers are not coming in the first place. In my opinion, the qualitative effort is even more important. But the strength of the tool is to ground us in facts and data around where are we losing teachers? Where might the disparity be? And where should we really prioritize this work? I'm gonna have time for questions uh, in a little bit, but as we um, transition, I invite you to write in the chat uh, whether you've used data in a similar way in the past and whether you think that using it that way could be potentially useful for you.